Hey guys, it's Matt Hooser Sawhorse, and I'm with Dave with Mitsubishi. We use their products in all of our houses that we can, where it's appropriate. And a lot of you guys are asking, it's like, all right, I'm interested in the mini split. And uh, a lot of times, what we're doing is doing the the duct mini split. If you're looking at a, a, a ductless mini split, they also have something that can go a cassette into the ceiling. So Dave's going to uh, talk about that and kind of explain how that works. Tap like and smash the subscribe button. So that, that's one of the biggest complaints that I have is like, you know, the wall, it's nice. A lot of people say hey, it looks good. Some people say I want everything to disappear. So you guys have come up with a solution for that. Yeah, Matt, exactly. We have a lot of homeowners that will look at our wall mount units and although they're very functional and they do the job to heat, cool, dehumidify and filter very effectively, the aesthetic of that on the wall sometimes is not what they're most satisfied with. So our engineers in Japan have come up with a new solution for that and now that is this design here which slides up into the ceiling grid which will give you all that comfort of heating, cooling, dehumidifying and filtering just like a wall mount unit would do but instead aesthetically more discreet up into a ceiling grid fits in between a 16 on center great for new construction or remodeling both both work very very well and, and what's nice about this is like people expect to see grills and stuff in the ceiling so this if they're not really looking very um, hard they're probably just gonna think this is just another HVAC grill on the ceiling correct they're still whisper quiet they're very discreet when you walk into a room barely notice they're even there if at all kind of like a light switch on the wall you just get used to it after a period of time and we find this to be very, very uh, effective at, at, at satisfying that desire, and they're selling really, really well. Now, like when I went to your um, training center, they mentioned that these are really popular, especially if you have like a master suite or something like that, where you want to keep the basically the owners that are always in the house more comfortable. So where are you seeing this? What part of the house are you mainly seeing these in? Well, these are often being put in bedrooms, uh, family rooms, living rooms, places where people spend the most time. Uh, they can be put in kitchens as well, but we tend to say, let's put them into spaces that where you're gonna be uh, needing to heat and cool at a zone at a time that would work well with this type of a design versus a, a wall mount. And sometimes space constrictions uh, preclude from having a wall mount be the best scenario in that case. So this offers another very good alternative. So you've got the out outdoor condenser down here and I witnessed this last year at the Showcase House very quiet, couldn't hear it. Actually, it was raining and I could hear the raindrops coming off of it. So let's, let's talk about how many of these cassettes can you get off of one of these condensers? So we have different sizes based upon the application and how many rooms and square footage is needed to be satisfied inside. So you can do up to eight indoor units off of that one outdoor unit. Generally five to six is the max on a, a typical usage I'm seeing. And then there's also one-to-one -one units, which would mean one outdoor to one indoor for that individual's own control if that's required in those applications. And what's, what's really nice about both of these systems, one, of course, you want it to be quiet on the inside, so these cassettes are very quiet. But on the outside, usually that's one of the things that the neighbor's complaining about. As soon as that kicks in, my neighbor's unit is very, uh, very noisy. I had to soundproof that wall because I'm doing recording in my office and their condenser kicks on. It's so noisy. These are very quiet, and quiet means also more efficient more efficient, they match up and, and exceed expectations for sound ordinances in many cities and towns that they have uh, requirements of outdoor noise levels of outdoor condensers. So we find that these are the perfect fit for that reason. They need very little space. They do need to be off the ground somewhat, especially in, in uh, snow conditions or if you've got a snow line level, these want to be raised up off. And the installing contractors know how to properly apply that to that situation as well. Yeah, I did have a friend of mine, and that's that's the question we asked last year. They're like, find out the best way to install one of these, because they lived in Boston, and somebody like came and pushed all the snow on top of their condenser. Mm. And she, and even before they installed it, like, you know, shouldn't it be off the ground? Like, no, no, it's fine right here, but it doesn't work if it's buried in snow. They don't work buried in snow. It's not a snow blanket design. <laughs> so we like to say, anytime you have to snow blow or shovel, Take a look outside at your unit. Make sure it's completely free and clear of any type of debris or snow. You don't want to put them under an eave as well that snow or icicles could drop off the roof on top of them. Up in Maine, there are some situations we can have these uh, snow roofs that have been invented and installed on many of them for that reason. People are getting very creative on protecting their outdoor units. Well, you brought up some very good points. So in Atlanta, Georgia, sometimes we, if you have a non-mini split system, you're using a traditional heat pump, it doesn't always work in the cold, but the fact that you mentioned, we're talking about Boston, we're talking about Maine. So these units work in cold weather climates and work just fine. Absolutely. It's a misnomer that heat pumps don't work in northern colder climates. That might have been true 
30, 40 years ago with your your daddy's heat pump, we call them. But today's technology with inverter driven, variable capacity, the the design temperatures now we build around that you can now come into a minus 13 degree situation and still provide ample comfort and heat in those circumstances. Yeah, well, I appreciate it. Thanks, David. Very, very well, Matt. Thank you. Thanks for watching this video, and I want to thank all of the vendors that I've been interviewing at the International Builder Show and also KBiz for providing this amazing information. If you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up, and we're going to create more content just like this, so make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you get more information. Now, if you guys have specific questions on any of these products, what you do is like leave a comment in the section below, and I'll take it back to the manufacturer, and ask that question, and get a response from you, and probably create a video response just for that. So appreciate all the people that have subscribed and supported us throughout the years and manufacturers as well. So thanks again and see you guys next time.